Hey, what's up, you guys? I wanted to give a demo of the Cloud Shadows asset for Unity URP. Um, so this asset basically lets you render Cloud Shadows in your game without rendering you know, big volumetric clouds or anything else like that. So the way that it works is it really just hooks into Unity's shadow system. Um, we're just going to raise our shadow distance on our universal render pipeline asset, which you can typically find in your assets folder. And when you find that, you're just going to make sure you know that you have your shadows enabled. And in this project, we have this little sample scene set up. This comes with the actual asset itself. You can see the asset imports here to your packages folder. And the um, it includes the samples. And in that samples, there's levels folder. And in that folder, <laughs> there's this folder here, the cloud shadows demo. And that includes this material, which is a just helper material and then you can go ahead and customize your shadows so the shadows are coordinated with your directional light so you can see as you move the directional light around let's see if we can show you here as you move the directional light around you can see that the shadows also move pretty straightforward and if you increase the brightness obviously it'll blow out your scene but the shadows still render nonetheless now this material is rendering on just this terrain mesh, but it works with any other mesh as well. So for example, if you bring in a cube here, and let's go ahead and scale that up, you can see those shadows are rendering on the cube as well. Okay, so the actual thing that you need to have in your project is you pretty much just need a mesh. The mesh should be a plane. Um, and it should have the Cloud Shadows material on it. And you should have the Cloud Shadows script running. And once you have those three things, that's pretty much all you need to do. It'll just work. Um, there are a few different options that you can customize for your Cloud Shadows. And uh, in addition to that, to make it pretty easy for you, I included this prefab that you can drag and drop in. And it has this whole thing sort of all set up for you. So you don't have to go and pick the plane, set up the plane, and set up the mesh render and all that other stuff. You just go into the samples, into the prefabs, drag and drop your cloud shadows, and then you'll see those cloud shadows are working. Now, um, the first thing that you're gonna wanna know is some info about the editor. So it basically includes four different categories. The, how the clouds look, a special feature called cloud dithering that I'll explain in a minute the cloud wind options, and then the follow target options. So uh, we'll just work our way from the top down to the bottom about these different options. So first option controls how cloudy it is. You can see if we make the cloudiness really high, then the clouds are completely covering. Uh, but if we bring this down, then you can see more and more clouds. Now the actual value you need here will depend on the texture that you use in your project. So I included a bunch of different textures that you can drag and drop in the editor like that. And these are different noise shapes and it changes how the clouds actually look. So you can see here for this one, we need to raise the cloudiness up quite a bit. So we'll just use noise one here. The orientation lets you change the orientation on the plane. So if it's just like set to zero, then the clouds will always move basically, not always move, but they'll <clears throat> sort of be oriented in a north, south, east, west orientation. You can rotate it, sure, like this. But you can see as you rotate on the y-axis, the cloud itself doesn't move. That's because we use uh, sort of a top-down mapping for it. And so you'll use orientation to change the orientation of the texture that we're projecting. As you look down here, you can see that the orientation changes. Cool. And then the tiling domain controls how frequently the noise tiles. So if you make it really big, the noise will tile less frequently. And if you make it pretty small, the noise will tile super frequently. I think something between 100 and 1000 looks pretty well, pretty good for most games. Um, yeah, so that's the look options. The next section is the dithering options. So in Unity URP, there is no transparent shadows. Um, all shadows are either there or not there. It's like a binary choice, right? 
Um, so to work around this, we sort of use like a dithering effect on the shadows. And this guarantees that the shadows are still working perfectly within Unity's shadow system. That way you don't need any special overlays or post-processing effects or anything like that. It's all just part of Unity's shadow system. Now, you can see that when I turn this on, let's say to 0.1, we start to get these sort of dippled artifacts. That is unfortunately the only way that you can do uh, transparency in URP right now is with this dither transparency. Uh, but I include a couple different options that let you control how that looks like. So you can control the scale. You can see if you make it 0.06, the, di the dappling pattern gets pretty big. And if you make it pretty high, then it kind of goes away. Um, so you kind of just have to depend, kind of depends on your project and the exact properties that look best for you. But I think something around 0.5 to 2 generally looks pretty good. So I'll just reset it to 0.5. There's two different types of noise that you can use. The one by default is blue noise, which looks like this. The other option is interleaved gradient noise, which looks a little bit more regular, but depending on what you prefer, um, might look better to your eyes. And then the next option is a maximum opacity. So you can sort of fade out the overall transparency of the clouds, which is actually really cool because you can still keep other objects rendering completely normal. So you can see here we have this cube and this cube is casting a shadow. Um, and you can see that the cloud shadows are correctly occluded behind this cube. And as we lower the cloud shadow opacity, they fade out, but the object itself still casts a shadow in the scene. So that's pretty unique among cloud shadow assets and something that I'm pretty proud of. And I think that you'll really appreciate having this feature so you can have sort of nuanced clouds instead of always super dark clouds. And then the final options relate to the wind. So you can change the wind speed, basically makes it go slower or faster. As you can see, there's sort of layers to the noise here. Let me make sure we're in game mode so that it's always moving. Yeah. So you can see that there's multiple layers of noise here. So it looks really natural and authentic. And you can also control the direction. And you can see that as we change the direction, it sort of just changes naturally. Um, there's no jittering or jumping as we change the wind direction. So that's because we store the cloud position um, on the CPU side. And because we're able to do that, we're able to continuously change the position over time. Um, and so that lets us get this really cool effect where you can you know, have like kind of realistic wind affecting your clouds in your game uh, and having the cloud direction change together with your in-game wind, for example. So that's something that we think is really cool. And then the final set of options relate to a follow target. And depending on your game, you might not need to use this, but basically it's just a little helper function that'll cause the clouds to follow around uh, an object that you choose. So let's say we want to follow this cube. So once I added that, you can see that the position of this cloud shadow uh, texture, this mesh changed. Um, to be basically directly above this target. So it's just a little helper function. Uh, you can use it if you want, uh, but in some cases you might need to, not need to, and you can hard code it yourself too, um, and just set derive the position here from an arbitrary target. So if we move this around, you can see that, let me try and give you a good example. Let's go ahead and make this plane itself pretty small. Cool. So you can see it's kind of up there now. As we move this, you can see that the plane itself is moving. But the cloud shadows still are in the same place. And that's because we're projecting them in the world space. Um, so your cloud shadows will always look smooth and crisp and clear, even if you're moving them around in your scene. They won't move themselves in world space. Okay, so I think that's a complete overview of the cloud shadow system. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. 
I'll include a link to the asset in the description. And um, if you like it, <laughs> please buy it. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you like this video, make sure to like it and to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.